Here we go, got some plants from the forest, the moch, and uh, made a little shower floor. But they came with some worms. <laughs> Excuse the worms in my shower. So if you do observe any holes, Hmm. Okay. You don't have to make everything three quarters. Okay, so a perfect choice of, um, I think. So just again found it a dump. I think it's 50% stone and sand, so it's, you know. In an ideal situation, you obviously would use this much gravel in a proper earthship wetland, two foot of gravel, then you'd use um, two inches of sand, and then you'd use about six to eight inches of soil. So in this scenario, I've used a little bit of gravel, used a little bit of sand, and I'm gonna be using a little bit of soil. And in that soil and sand, I'm going to be planting the, some plants from the forest. Put them in, the sand is going to be obviously staying moist all the time because it will, you know, also have some water, obviously. Sand retains a little bit of water, and unlike stone. Stone will just drain it. So it's a good mixture. It basically allows the water to flow, which is what I want. But then the water plants will be able to tap into that thing because into the, the, the medium because the soil can retain water and w sand less so. Um, obviously, it depends on your climate, but I'm going to be testing it out and uh, obviously adding my thoughts and experimentations on this. Now it's going to dump the water there and I'm going to put more plants in, in that area into the gravel sand uh, soil medium the soil on top um, yeah um, some bulrushes because that's not a big nice big area at the end and that'll be the final dump of water so that's at least a responsible uh, dumping of water into the environment versus just straight uh, as we are not using super eco-friendly shampoos can't seem to find them in the village <laughs> where we're staying so we have gotta be you know we're not making them yet ourselves uh, so we real efficiency as usual. Okay, so I'm filling up the hole because the water is collecting there. It's the pass the water finds the path of least resistance. So I'm putting all the clay back um, about this far below the soil level. And then I'm going to excavate the soil, creating a bit of a uh, depression in the middle. And out of the depression I'm going to guide the water to the Earthship wetland that I'm constructing right next door there. So I'm just taking out a really good topsoil which is now mushy from all the showers I've been having. I'm getting down to clay which is there already. I'm gonna clean up it to make a lens and from that bottom part insert my fitting or if I'm just gonna have plastic running with a little V groove, take it down to the wetland. You know, following the obviously three degree slope. Um, yeah, it all depends on a budget and uh, you know, like I don't have a car. So if I wanna go and get a fitting, then I need to go run to the shop. And, uh, and I really wanna show you, I think in these series of lessons, like let's just freaking do it on a budget, like full power. Let, let's go and radical plumbing, that's what it's called. <laughs> Apologies, my microphone is uh, wasn't connected properly. So basically, what I'm saying is that on the other side of the shower, where I started digging the constructed wetland, that's taken quite a bit of time and energy, and um, you know I wasn't up for that big mission right now, and I don't have that energy at the moment, all the time. So I've decided, but the water is you know flowing from right under our feet and into that hole that I started digging. Um, you know, every time we have a shower and it's seeping into the ground and obviously can rot the metal supports that the house is standing on. So therefore I've decided to do a little um, narrow trench 
um, basically which is going to divert the water away it's also going downhill at the garden and it's going to take the water um, downhill so I'm just showing you how I'm doing it it's going to be just basically taking a very a width a spade or a, a width of a spade I'm digging it out and then yeah basically and the reason for that is because then I can use a spade to you know move it away um, so here I'm basically measuring to create the little wooden sides which will hold the lens um, in inverted commas uh, the sand that will be shaped as a lens to divert the water away. So I found making them uh, quite tight is uh, good uh, because then I can just bang them into place and then also it will be much easier to screw them in whilst I'm alone. Yeah so now all the sides are complete and I'm ready to put the sand in. And the sand is basically going to absorb all that mush of clay that's underneath my feet. And it worked quite well. And so this is the first uh, coat of sand. And basically it will be just to get it ready for the plastic. As you can see I'm leaving a bit of a gap on top. Yeah. Because I'm going to put more sand o over the plastic. We obviously don't want to see the plastic underneath. Or you can make nice stones, the finishing touch is up to you. Very wet. <laughs> I think I need to add a, and it's sinking, the sand is sinking. Yeah, so bit by bit, I'll be adding more sand, shaping it as I've shown you, and then show you the next step with the plastic and then more sand. Or stones. Okay, so because of the clay mush, I decided to throw some old piece of something that bends. Um, obviously, you might not have the same problem because we've been using the shower for quite a bit of time, and that's why it's uh, all mushy. Message to take home is that <laughs> the water must flow that way. This is from our insulation. It's probably going to use at least two layers of this. Again, don't hurry to trim the edge, you can always trim it, you might, I might find I need to do some extra sand on the sides and then I can have the plastic going up the sides. Never hurry trimming the waterproofing layer, I've made some big mistakes with that. So if you do observe any holes, why not use some sticky tape? Anyway, so what I want to show you is that I've got two layers, it's running that way, um, my wetland is there, but it's something that I can easily change because I'm not going to make it you know too permanent but it's a quick job just to get the water away yeah I can always check at this stage with a bucket of water yeah it's working Make sure you push the edge in because otherwise the plastic uh, will be te torn when sand comes in. So you push the edge all the way in. So now I can put a nice sand and if I'm happy I can trim the edge. And at least then the shower looks nice and the water goes that way. That will also go to the wetland. Of course, because that's just not good. But that's a start. We've got a shower and now we're going to treat this water. Yeah, so you would open this up, probably make a little tear and then all the water will come down and then you check anywhere it stops. That means that it needs to be shaven off, yeah? And then the look, and then the water carries on. So the water shows you where it wants to go and anywhere it stops and then you do this little test and then of course you want to line it with plastic and then it rolls and then there you take it to the lowest part of the garden 
and I'm even gonna make a little wetland here. I'm gonna get some sand and sto some stones and I'm gonna put it in this plastic and I'll overlap the plastic like this yeah so it goes down 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 and um, I'm gonna go get some plants from the forest that like water and I'll have even this little bit cleaning out so you can even make this into a wetland as a little river like a meandering river and then there'll be nice little plants because it gets a little bit of sun and they'll do some water treatment and there you can dig out a bigger a big pit put a pump with a float switch when the float switch is full like in the course for the grey water it kicks in and sends water to your garden beds or flushing of loose. So as you can see behind me, uh, the little bit that I've dug in is just filling up. So this is called, I believe it's called the percolation level of the soil. Of the soil. How much the soil is able to absorb the water. And it's an important part of grey water treatment because if I keep on dumping you know smelly gray water there eventually it will turn to black water because over time it will just go uh, funny <laughs> and turn to black water because of the uh, bacteria that's going to start breeding because we've got the washing machine going down this thing and the shower with all the skin particles and soaps and so on so it's gray water only if it's you know as soon as it comes out once it sta starts standing for a long time it really be turns out nasty so and that nasty water then will enter the groundwater table very very slowly in my case it's uh, it's clay <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good place to build a dam that's why there's so much water standing here so there's two things I can do I can either carry on digging the trench down with whilst it's a trench is actually a little mini wetland uh, which is what I started doing um, and then as you can't see from there but it's a sl slight slope down and then basically that water will just you know be treated and then the water will disperse into the landscape gently clean water if i'm going to keep it here which is a very small part for gray water very thin wetland that i don't think it's going to treat it all 100 percent so this water is still not going to be you know super clean so that's gonna sit there so the only other thing I can do if I, if I do for example I don't have a slope and that's where the end point of my wetland is is you gotta pump it out so you have a drainage pump and this is what I was trying to explain to you in the vibratory pump that I've inserted into the well we've got this you know concrete ring well the vibratory pump shakes and as I heard from somebody else it's very bad for the joints because the joints between the those rings they start coming apart and obviously stirs up the muck so you got another kind of pump called drainage pump basically it's got a float switch it's a thing that you lower down and it's quite quick it doesn't vibrate and it just pumps really fast it doesn't have a really big head and that's why I chose that other pump of 70 meters head so it can pump 70 meters high but that drainage pump let's say has maybe a seven nine meter head um, but it doesn't vibrate and it's also got a float switch it comes with a little float switch and when, uh, when obviously there's enough water it, a float switch kicks in and the pump starts pumping the water out until the float switch drops and then it cuts off the pump so it's the pump we used in the at the end of the grey water system in the South African uh, house basically the same system um, if I'm going to keep it here, uh, then I'll need to, or even if it's going to go that side. An airship uses a 12 volt pump that can drain it out and basically when that is, that gets pumped out, it's 12 volt little pump that gets sent to flush the loose or, well in their case flush the loose, in our case uh, we have composting toilets so we'll send it down to the vegetable beds. Um, or you can use uh, a, a drainage pump that's not 12 volt, 220 volt, that bigger thing. Um, and I'll be explaining it to, as we go in the training because we'll be building a water organizing module. We'll be building a earthship wetland right there and then that'll have the 12 volt pump. And I might as well just go for the whole earthship system because it's really tried and tested. Although we don't have 12 volt here, we don't have sun. 
I don't have wind turbine right now. We have electricity. So, you know, you got to be with what uh, situation you have. So two choices, a 12 volt uh, pump that can pump this uh, bits and pieces out. But 12 volt pump can't take any bits <laughs> or pieces because it, it'll get blocked up. So that's why they have this proper wetland and nothing can fall into the end. It's pretty clean. There is a, a peat moss filter at the end of the wetland, which does does the final treatment. Um, you know, which I could put some peat moss here because there's plenty around. But the bottom line is that be, that's got to be clean, cleaned water without bits. If I'm going to use that 12 volt uh, submersible pump, or, or not, or not submersible, you know, um, with a little screen um, at the end. So the end bit there is to have um, a tank, uh, uh, some form of a container, uh, in my case, in this case, that uh, the pump or, or the submersible pump or um, the non-submersible piece of a pump can go into. Um, because <coughs> if you keep it like that, then obviously the soil keeps on falling in and it just becomes messy over time. So I think the most important part is to give it a test. Here she comes. So it's got to be lined with plastic so it doesn't soak into the ground. Then well, you got the point. The key message is that the water must flow down and not <laughs> up. Anywhere it's being blocked up, it needs to be scraped out. And uh, uninterrupted flow. And obviously at the bottom there, needs to dig a bit of a hole. Just opening it up, it will be, make it easier for me to put the sand down. I can see by the depth of the water something is blocking it up here. So obviously you need to take the plastic out. Oh yeah. There we go. That, that part is too high. Oh there's a stick there. So yeah, uninterrupted flow, you guys got it, eh? Because obviously if that blocks up then it's gonna flow back in. Beauty of sand that it's porous. So all this water is gonna go through. If you want the water to go away faster. You want to have small stones that you're showering on top, then the water is going to disappear. But I didn't have them, so I used what I had. But as you can see, it's moving away. So this increases the surface area of penetration. Yeah? So here's the sand, completely not waterlogged. So I just need to get a little pipe for here, because it's also the washing machine water. I uh, need to get a little pipe, which I found on a dump as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the little river is working and I'm gonna make it into a mini wetland. So that's filling up there. It's a bigger hole and ultimately a pump because the water does not soak in because it's just clay. And there is the gravel, which I'm gonna put at the bottom of that river. I just brought, it's not even gravel, it's broken bricks, stones. Uh, but I got it for free once again. I think it's pieces of tar. But it will do. There's a little 
plaga agora. So something I want to just, uh, something I remembered from doing like a river wetland before, just like a meandering thing, it was one of my, it was my first wetland I've done. If you ever, because obviously if it's all of the slope, all the water will always drain out. If you ever want any little pools of water to be forming, for example, you have some lilies or that you want a little pool of water to form for it because, you know, it, it floats on the, the water, the leaves, um, then when you go dig down, you just need to make a little bump, you know, in your in your little river bed, <laughs> and then as it goes down, the little bump here will form a little bit of water. But obviously, you can't do that if you have separate pieces of plastic like I've used. It's got to be one continuous plastic that, you know, when the water backs up, it doesn't go under, you know, the plastic and you know, do the opposite of what you wanted to do, uh, absorb into the soil before it's even treated or go under your house, make your house moldy and so on. But it is possible and obviously if you are using plastic, you're going to use three layers of plastic. I've done it already on a no budget. It's a temporary thing, it could stay as a permanent thing. Um, who knows, when, you know, still doing it the best way I have with the resources I have, but um, here I just use single plastic and because it's always going down I've put the plastic underneath and it's just gonna roll out. If a drop of two of water escapes it's not a train smash because it keep, keeps on raining here all the time but the main thing is I don't want every single shower to sink in underneath the house and that will do it for me. But now as I said yeah and the little pool here is backing up and therefore I will need to have the little drum with the pump taking it out or carry on digging down 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 until it really is further away from the house it's long enough that the water is treated with the plants and then it can just escape into the landscape which is something i might do because a pump is another 50 dollars you know after the virus covid 19 the budget situation is different for most of us so if we can do it on a budget I think this is why you guys will appreciate this project because I'm still not spending any money I'm just doing it with what I have finding rubble I mean finding pieces of tar went to the dump got a piece of tar and broken broken bricks and broken cement pieces and I use that instead of gravel you can also I know Mike Reynolds have used uh, shredded plastic in the wetland as a medium for plants to root themselves in so possibilities are endless so the trick is to keep the plastic open that it doesn't fold that you open the open the plastic up and then fill it accordingly with the sand I'm just gonna spread it more or less evenly so there's no humps and then I'm going to put the final layer of I got a bit of soil after that I'm going to trim up the plastic and I'm ready to go get some plants from the forest or from well <laughs> in our forest there's plenty of these it's the most amazing ecosystem wish I had a drone to show you but it's a set of uh, ponds that have been dug up like hundreds and hundreds of ponds so it's and this area formed marshes so there's this raised areas this is where you see all the blueberries and uh, blackberries that uh, we're picking most amazing herbs as well and then there's these low-lying areas uh, in between and there's just all over like weird very strange and it creates the most amazing ecosystem because as you know from permaculture uh, the edge between the two um, the two zones and here we have an aquatic marsh zone uh, which starts us at a pond and then obviously plants grow in forest and uh, you know it, it, it pond turns into a marsh and then marsh turns into forest and it, it's so soft I'll take you into the forest it's so soft and it's smooshy and that's some of this stuff we're gonna bring through and obviously bulrushes and water plants are growing everywhere so that's why I'm gonna take it 
um, from but you'd need to go to a healthy ecosystem somewhere where you live or where you drive past yeah and then we'll plant it in there and the soil helps it to because it retains moisture the plants don't get a shock because if you take them out of this healthy um, soil or the aquatic system where they come from and just put them into sand yeah so you almost got to bring some of so i'm going to be maybe even careful not to put too much soil maybe i'll put just an inch of of good soil and then i'll bring the plants and the ferns and then i'll take a little bit of that good soil and actually put it put it in here as well you know from with the medium that they come from with from the forest so they have a bit of their habitat with this so i don't give them a shock by taking them out of soil and putting them into gravel and sand or some other soil from our garden So when we plant, it's important to get to the gravel, to the bottom gravel, because that's what gets wet. Because we want to get our plant as close as possible to the water. And if you dig, you'll actually feel a bit of water here. Yeah. And then we just cover him up. So in the beginning, I'll need to uh, prune it, just to, so it doesn't, you know, just to help it to stabilize and then it will spread out probably only in the spring next year and yeah so we're using a variety of plants so there's different water plants and another thing is and until if i if you don't get to the water level like in an earthship wetland you have a lot of soil in the beginning you'll just water a bit water until the roots establish themselves to get to the water level and then every time you have a shower which is once or twice a day, they'll be watered. Yeah, I see there's roots here as well. So that's probably goes like this. Oh yeah, the washing machine water is coming in. So this is what I mean, the gra because this gravel is blocked, being mixed up with soil, the soil, because the gravel layer is too narrow, too shallow. The soil is mixed up, it's blocked up and the water just floats on top which is not what it's supposed to be the water is supposed to go through the gravel and it never goes through the soil the soil is just the rooting uh, the, the medium for the roots to root and something else i wanted to show you look at the plant i've chopped it fully i grabbed you know i broke it when i was transporting it but and when i was actually digging it out but I, because i brought the root system and the root system was strong look how the plant came back to life so don't be scared to trim them up from the top and here is how it goes from three quarter to half inch and then to three quarter again at the T and then down to half inch pipe and then back to three quarter the tap. All of this up and down cost me about the, the amount of money. So it all should have been half inch for exception of the last piece where I'll go up to step up to the shower. So it, the experiment came out unsuccessful, but I learned a lot. I understand why the Earthship wetlands are so large, because here we only had maybe five centimeters of gravel, then a bit of sand, and then instead of like one and a half foot of gravel, and then soil. So what happened is as soon as I put the soil, it mixed up with the gravel and blocked up. So it's not allowing the water to drain fast enough. Um, yeah, which is a problem. So that's why the gravel part of the bed has to be much, much deeper, much deeper. So this, as soon as you put the soil, it doesn't mix up with all the gravel. There's still some gravel that, that is free of soil and sand. And that's why we go so deep with the gravel. So I'll have to probably remove the soil from here, remove the gravel and redo it again without putting any soil or sand because it's so um, not deep, shallow. So I'm going off to the forest to get some plants. I got my 
uh, the big bag, which I'm hoping I could, you know, because obviously I won't be able to take the wheelbarrow and all the pathways, so I'm hoping to pull that behind me. I've got some polypropylene bags that the sand and cement came, or the stones came in. So I'm reusing those. I've got some rope in case I need to pull something or tie something up. And of course I've got my spade to get the plants out. Yeah, I'm going to harvest some plants for free. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there is, as soon as you take one out of the forest, more grows. Um, because they just expand and take over. Yeah. So I didn't need to go far, literally entered from the road and the wheelbarrow is just here and we've got some nice water plants which I was going to harvest from deeper in the forest but uh, I don't think I can walk here, It's uh, this is bogs, this is these Russian bogs, let's see, Opa, now you can check. There's just water coming through. Yeah, I'm gonna drown <laughs> or sink. But that these are water plants this is perfect. And bull rushes, I don't think I'll make to them from here. But it's a very interesting. Ah, man, I wish I had a drone. <laughs> One day I'll get it. But wow, it's just these bogs everywhere. Everywhere bogs, bogs, and these steps in between where we harvest the berries. The, the little pathways in between which are raised. I think I might even, you know, just take it a block of, I could, they come off quite easily. So I think I'm gonna take, use my hands or maybe gloves and just get them with a little bit of soil. I think each plant's gotta be different. I remember some other water plants, they like come out with a big blob of earth. So, and here I tried and just gotta play with it, but yeah. Obviously you want to take a bit of earth with it. But, um, and when you transplant them, we will clip these extra leaves, yeah? And we'll leave the, the little young ones. Because these dead, these, these already that are broken, they're gonna send energy to them to develop them and it's not necessary. And to, to root it properly, you cut these and then, yeah, that's better. Got it with a bit of turf. It's a, um, sends us uh, little roots under the ground, big roots and then chuk, 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 lots of plants come out of that. Yeah, they really come out easily. They just, just t take them. Like they're on the surface, they don't root. But I'm gonna try different varieties of water plants. So you don't put your eggs in one basket. Because you also need different types of rooting system. Deeper rooting ones, shallow rooting ones. A variety makes a system stable. And that will cost me a few hundred dollars in the shop. Uh, got some other cool plants that I'm going to show you. Just nearby. Yeah, so I'm on a bog, bog. You can see quantity of these plants here. Plenty. This is water. Look at my spade. It's just a, a thick mush. It's all liquid. <laughs> oh. So this is how to, a pond turns to forest. It's a natural succession. A bull rush. A bull rush. Yeah? This is all on top of the marsh. Swamp. There's the berries. These are the, 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 the ridges that I spoke of. Look at that. Mulberries or blueberries. Blueberries. Look at the size of them. It's my finger. Uh, pretty big. Hundreds. And they all fall into the floor now. Nobody's, I mean, some people are picking them. Look at the color there. And in between is this marshes. 
that's water. So I'll also take some of this with roots. Yeah. Oxygenators, of course. You can see by the cellular structure. Uh huh. And some of these grasses, man, there's so many plants to grab. And as soon as I open this, within a few days, it just all covers up. And it's just, these are the other types of berries. There are millions of them. Millions. You can eat and eat and eat and harvest for a whole winter. But I think the best way is to freeze them. Drying them didn't work. My dry lesson will come out separately. It did work, but it's just too much of a, you need to really collect a lot to dry enough for the whole winter. What the question? Спасибо огромное, Милик. Спасибо. Да ну ты что, не за что. Some will die. Some will die, some will survive, some will, survive. Some will thrive. Some we need to prune and we just learn from them. Most of these, like the big leaves will have to be cut away because they're, they're like, they're, they're broken. So we just kind of cut them here. Maybe some of the smaller leaves that are strong, we'll leave them. But don't be too shy to prune some things, especially like plants like this and grasses. Yeah, it'll just help them to be strong and big. So here is what the mini wetland looks like after I have just planted it. So now I'm going to prune it. See there's a young shoot. That one I'm gonna leave obviously. And every and the, and then these guys. Yeah, everything else can go. And it was these grasses as well. Everything that snapped during transportation process. Just everything that's floppy and down. I'm just gonna trim it and even even this. I'm gonna trim it all. Um and this is what it looks like after it's been pruned. And the reason I put sticks is just more for you guys to see the edge between the lawn and the plant and for myself so I don't step on it. But yeah, so it's pretty heavy duty pruning. Literally left some of the thriving little things and every, otherwise everything else was gone. And then I'm gonna obviously prop some of these things up. The grass was doing well so I left it. Okay guys, it did not work. Being so shallow, the trench after i've put the soil completely blocked up the soil blocked up the gravel in a typical earthship wetland the wetland is much much deeper about two foot deep and there's at least a foot and a half of gravel so the soil never gets to the you know at least 70 percent of the gravel so anyway what i wanted to show you is that i'm digging this out and I'm just going to keep it as a temporary trench where water can get out because the main thing is to drain the shower. So what I wanted to show you here is that I have trimmed this plant right off and look how it's pack picking up nicely. So yeah, this is where I started digging a little bit, opening up and then the water started to flow finally. So I'm, I'm making a plus, like in, in a, a plus which is slightly smaller. 
we've got a lot of the detail for that in um, abundance of water training but you make it smaller I mean I don't have to do it here but I do then you stretch it through yeah and that's how we make a sealed connection if we ever need to make a, a cut through a liner and then when it the pl plus stretches over the pipe you grab it if it's a bit looser I mean you, you pull the fa um, liner you pull it and then you put a clamp it's quite a few reduces oh gosh that's not much of a head space <laughs> uh, I should have taken it five centimeters shorter. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to lower the floor. Or buy a shorter piece, but that's another bicycle ride. Anyway, we'll figure it out. And now the tap is on the other side, which is also a problem. I need the tap here. So something I wanted to show you is also you know, plan what you're do, doing with fittings. Like this is three quarters, it's more expensive the tap of three quarters and half inch. Because I only needed a, you know, you don't have to, just because your shower for example, you were only able to get this head. In my case because it's outdoor shower so I had to search for something special. You don't have to make everything three quarters. I could have just had a little fitting that takes from here to half inch and then everything else should be half inch. Half inch this, this is already half inch so it would have been there. Now I need to get extra pieces, extra pieces and more expensive tap. <clears throat> and let's go see outside. And of course as you can see outside, I've also gone from half inch this so I've got a one a three quarter inch thing that goes through my tank then I take it down to half inch so that's an extra piece then I've got half inch then I've got an uh, what in I'll just call it increaser then I increase it back to um, three quarter this is three quarter then I take it, uh, you know, as I shown you, down to <laughs> half inch again, and then I take it down through my shower. I take it to three quarter the tap, and then my shower. This was a, you know, looking at this now, it's a mess. It should have been a half inch fitting through the tank, a steel one, so it doesn't snap because a plastic one will obviously break. Half inch through the tank, then. I could have then just put that half inch pipe to increase it because I needed to take it further away and then just keep everything half inch <laughs> right down and then right at the end take it to three quarter to that gold fitting and something else I wanted to show you the shower is finished well more or less I put some stones just a little you know the little strip of fabric, I should have had it on the outside because um, it would have been neater. The thin strips, just something to consider. But uh, yeah, so it's now a hot little steam, steam room. Put the plastic. Yeah, and I've moved the tap. There's the tap. Now, I know it's a temporary solution. You keep on asking why am I doing temporary because we're not staying here and we need a shower. Uh, that I just need to close it up and then I'll be building around this whole tank for winter. So it's also, <laughs> it's for now and then it will have a whole box over it. So the experiment came out unsuccessful but we all learned a lot from this and we realized why we need to have a certain depth of gravel at least two foot 
of the whole wetland at least two foot deep and at least two foot wide. So this was a temporary quick solution to divert the water and that's what I should keep it as. Without soil, just gravel and you know plants might not do that well in just gravel but we'll give it a try but without any soil. And then the gravel will let the water through easily. Yeah, so this is the shower and uh, that's what it's looking at at the moment. I know the plastic is pretty tatty and that's why I'm going to cover it with proper insulation. But guys, I made this shower for free. I didn't even go to, you know, besides some fittings, the logs I had here, that plastic I found on the street. So I just used, uh, um, you know, that was an off cut. So the plastic uh, was an off cut that I didn't go to the shop for. And uh, I made it for free. You know, uh, you may say oh, it's not too sexy, but I made it for free, <laughs> and that means it's very cool. So, my airship uh, wetland uh, clay digging is very, very, very hard. So I wanted to show you that, you know, it's working. Here we go, got some plants from the forest, the moth, moth. And uh, made a little shower floor. And it's so cool, it's loving the grey water and it's also an original filter. It's the starting filter for the system. Yeah, can you guys see? So basically, just to summarize, created a, a bit of a trough underneath, going that way, yeah, just shaped it as I was showing in the video, then plastic going up these edges here uh, then more sand but I suggested using rather small stones for drainage uh, on top and then that's basically that's going that way once this is working uh, and it's uh, good drainage and you've tested everything then you can you know bring the plants from the forest but they came with some worms. <laughs> Excuse the worms in my shower. Um, yeah, that's 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 it. You know, that that's brilliant. So you you test everything, and then you then you you know you cover it up and put your extra plants in through. And now we've got a lovely shower. And some plants will not work and they're dying and then you replace them to other things that are thriving. Yeah? You don't have to, you know, oh well, well, that's not doing well. Uh, then you pick up on the plants that are doing well and you bring more of those, which is what I'm going to do later, sometime soon, <laughs> when I get to the forest, which is 200 meters away. <laughs> There's plywood that warps from water. So try and get the plywood, if you are going to use a little piece of plywood that's uh, water stable, yeah? It uh, doesn't warp, but just, uh, of course you could use some nice stones. I just used what I had, and thanks God it was a water stable plywood, marine plywood I think they call it. Um, yeah, but the water is going and uh, there it is coming out on the other end. So I've just lifted this little fern up a little bit with the stone and I see the water is draining way faster now so and obviously all of this should be covered in gravel no soil this is what I kept on telling you all this time that soil just blocked it up so where it's gravel it's flowing and where it's soil it stops and it overflows for this narrow wetland for this thin thin shallow wetland it's autumn, it's what it looks like, the leaves all over, you can barely see the wood. Nature's going to sleep slowly. What's the day today? Like 8th of October. And I need to get this thing for winter. This is what I started and uh, that will be in the next video.